Well, I think actually once they get to the rink, they realize how fun it actually is. You know, some of that government support is what kickstarted a lot of these initiatives. If you look back to, uh, as you mentioned, a couple of years ago, barely over a thousand players. Now we're exceeding over 4,000 adults with the youth leagues, with the club leagues, with the school leagues, over 10,000 participants. So it's something that once kids actually get out there and adults and they see how fun it is, how new it is. There's an interesting trend where uh, new sports becoming something that people are latching onto because people aren't used to it. They're getting out there and they're seeing how fun it is. They're able to tell their friends that they're trying something new. So a lot of different factors have gone into it, but ultimately having that groundswell of support and then kids and adults actually playing and enjoying it, uh, it's really taken it to the next level, especially over the last few years. Now, I did read that hockey has actually been around in China for uh, quite some time, and this might not be a fair comparison, but why hasn't it caught on in popularity like basketball in China? Well, I think in, when it comes to basketball, obviously you have the, the hometown hero of Yao Ming playing in China and then going over to the U.S. and obviously being that tentpole, that player that everyone is going to be able to look at as a national hero. The games being on, obviously right now the NBA and uh, with recent comments by Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Morey and the games being taken off of uh, some of the streaming services in China, that's become a bit of an issue this year. But in terms of the growth and the popularity, especially over the last two decades with the NBA, it's been a constant presence and it's almost become the national sport in China. I think the NHL has a lot, or hockey in general, has a long way to go, mostly because they're not seeing the cream of the crop in terms of uh, the competition from the NHL. The NHL has gone over for a couple of international uh, you know, games, exhibition games. The Boston Bruins were over there. In 2018, Wayne Gretzky, the greatest hockey player of all time, was there for public appearances and to try to educate, do some uh, clinics and educate some of the, the youth participants and certainly some of the adults there as well. So they really have a long way to go, but they're making great strides. And then certainly as we point towards the Olympics, that's really where they're seeing a lot of momentum going. I did read that uh, Alex Ovechkin was also there in China making the rounds as well. Um, the National Hockey League, you mentioned them, they are sharing an office or they have some office space with the NBA in Beijing. Um, how can the NBA help them? Are they sort of providing a blueprint for success uh, for the NHL? And what's the NHL learning from them? I think if they did follow that blueprint, they would be very successful. What they need to do is build up that grassroots support in terms of people wanting to go out and not just playing in the, from the youth perspective, not just the 6 to 12-year-olds. They need this to continue uh, longer so that they could have competitive international teams so that they could uh, grow some of those teenage players into potential players that can make it into the NHL. So that's really where, you know, for every one Yao Ming, there are dozens of other uh, Chinese players who have played overseas and even some in the NBA. But what the, to really grow the league and to really grow the popularity, the NHL really needs to get a player overseas to play not only in college in the U.S. and potentially make a name for themselves, but certainly play in the NHL. That will really take things to the next level.